Howdy there folks, got some very important things to show you in today's video that we're gonna get into. Um, a lot of people are looking at the market and they're like, what in the world? What is going on with this market? It keeps going up and up and up. And people are looking at it and they're like, wait a minute, Google reported a dumpster fire quarter this week, Meta reported a dumpster fire quarter, and Amazon reported an awful quarter. Why are stocks going up and up and up? And people are looking at this and trying to figure this out. And so I want to break things down. I got some very important things to show you in this video and how fast they start to switch. Wait until some of the data I got to show you in this video. Oh my gosh, it's going to blow your mind. But they switch really darn quickly. That's all I'll say about that. Okay. Hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, thank you for everybody for joining me. And uh, also, Moomoo, if you want to check that out, there's a pinned comment down there. Um, they got a few days left here from my understanding of the 15 up to 15 free stocks. That valued up to $2,000. They are celebrating their 10th anniversary, so that is gonna be pinned comment down there. So, uh, two weeks ago, uh, October 12th, after the market closed, I did a video called the stock market set up for an epic rally, and I went into detail in that video on exactly what was gonna transpire in the market and why the market was gonna have an epic rally. And basically, since the morning after that video, uh, the Dow's climbed about 4,000 points since that video came out. The NASDAQ is up about almost 9% since that video came out, and the S&P 500 is up about 10% roughly since that time, right? And so, like, like I went into detail in that video, right? And I went into all these different things, and all that's playing out, but there's a few things that are playing out that I didn't even foresee happening, and those things are happening now at this point in time, right? And as far as where the market's at in general, we're at, uh, as far as the NASDAQ goes, we're about 31% off of highs. So keep this in mind. Think about how strong the markets come back, right? And we're still 31% of, you know, 30% or so off highs for the NASDAQ, right? Even despite this big comeback over the last few weeks, the S&P 500 still is down about 19%. It's out of bear market territory now because it's less than a 20% uh, downward move there. IWM in terms of the Russell is still 25% down. So it goes to show you how much we still have to climb back. And whether we get, you know, all that back over the next year or two years or whatever, you know, that debate is can be around that, right? It shows you how much we really still have to climb back here, okay? Now, this is extremely important. Extremely important. Apple stock was up over 7% today. Apple saved a lot. They did not come in and report a dumpster fire quarter like basically everybody else in big tech did. Basically, everybody else in big tech reported these awful quarters. Apple came in and actually did okay. And that in this market is everything because a lot of people looked at Apple and they said, okay, you know, if they come in and report a really bad quarter, iPhone sales down big, this down big, right? Uh, the whole market's going to tank. It's a two and a half trillion dollar market cap. But the fact is Apple came in, it was okay. If you go through their numbers, it wasn't a disaster. Now, my personal opinion on this, I do not think by any stretch of the imagination, Apple's out of the woods. I'm very concerned about Apple's numbers in 2023. Very concerned. Whenever your new iPhone comes out, sales are always going to be good. It doesn't matter if there's a lot of excitement or how the economy is. Just a lot of people with a lot of money go buy the new iPhones. It's the way it is, okay? And they go buy the newest one every single time. It's the way it is, okay? But how's demand going to be once you get rid of all those people that are always going to upgrade to the new iPhone, doesn't matter what Apple comes out with. They could, they could basically not change anything and people would go buy the newest iPhone, right? Once you get past that, which is the first couple months of demand, then you get to see what the, in my opinion, true demand is. And I definitely have some concerns about what the true demand is for this iPhone lineup in light of obviously inflation slicing and dice in the middle class. And the fact is most people in the middle class are in a worse financial situation for the next year than they were in the previous year. Now, we're not even talking about unemployment going up in any substantial way. If you're talking about that, that's a whole other negative lever, obviously, for Apple to deal with in 2023. China's still messy. We all know that. Europe's you know, getting it worse than probably anybody right now. So there's a high probability that Apple, over this next year, I think there's a high probability they're going to report a very disappointing fiscal year because now they're actually going to go into their fiscal year, their first quarter fiscal quarter is about to start right now. And um, they're also going to go into their next calendar year, obviously, in two months, once we get into the new year. I think both those, I, I don't see how they grow. 
I'll just be honest, in services, only grew 5% this past quarter. So I look at that and, and I just think there's a lot of troubling signs there that I think are just important to pay attention to. And I still, my personal opinion on this, I still don't know, I still don't feel like Apple's hit its true bottom yet. I, I honestly think that might come in 2023 at some point in time, which, you know, we'll see. I, I hope it doesn't. I own Skywork Solutions stocks. I hope I, uh, Apple sells a you know, record amount of iPhones over the next year because I own Skywork Solutions stock and they obviously sell a ton of semiconductors in the iPhone. Every iPhone that is sold, Skyworks makes a bunch of money off that. So I hope that doesn't happen. But I got to be honest, I'm not feeling very confident about that in terms of sales numbers. But for now, keyword is for now, things are okay. And we know Mr. Cook is phenomenal at pitching things in the best way possible. And they were very, let's just call it not very detailed in regards to guidance, right? Which sets them up in a smart scenario because now they don't have to disappoint on either side. So, but this is, this matters in a significant way. The fact that Apple didn't come in with a disaster, you know, when you're a two and a half trillion dollar market cap, this is what everybody's looking at, right? Now this matters in a pretty significant way. You know, this whole deal, I'm not even going to read it. You guys can read it for yourself. Okay. What all that says there, but you know, saying there's no need, it's a step in the right direction. Are we out of the woods? Kind of like the Apple situation. No, we're not out of the woods in this situation. We, the things could obviously still go south, but this is a step in the right direction. Saying something like that, it's a step in the right direction. Can't get too confident, no different than the Apple numbers, but it's a step in the right direction, okay? There's no doubt about that. Now, Amazon. So this stock went down as much as 20% after hours yesterday, as it probably deserved to be because the earnings were such a disaster in terms of the guidance, right? They guided for basically, and if you watch my Amazon video, I went all super in depth in the numbers and showed you everything, right? But they guided for revenue to be off about $10 billion from what analysts were expecting. Awful. And then operating income of potentially $0 for the Christmas quarter. Come on, man. Come on. Like what are we talking about here? And so the stock went down 20% after hours, but it got saved. It got completely saved here today. Apple saved that stock and the market in general. And the thing I'm about to show you after this, uh, that also saved Amazon stock as well. And so Amazon the reason that stock was only down roughly 7% today and not 17% was because of Apple and because of the next thing I'm about to show you here. So yeah, that, that, that's interesting, right? And in terms of Amazon, it's one of those stocks that you, know, you look at and you, you got to wonder, like, is this a bottom for Amazon? Was today the bottom? Was after hours yesterday the bottom, right? And um, it could be a short-term bottom, but still, you know, there's definitely some concerns there long-term. The good news for Amazon is they have set their, their, some, their, themselves up for very low expectations moving forward. When they came in and reported, you know, uh, that guidance number, revenue and operating income, that sets the company up with very low expectations for the next year, essentially. And people are not going to have big numbers, expectations for uh, Amazon, right? This obviously helped save the market and saved Amazon stock and many stocks here today. Key inflation gauge for the Fed rose 0.5% in September, which is in line with expectations. The core personal consumption expenditures price index in September increased 0.5% from the previous month and 5.1% from a year ago. First off, this is still a high number, okay? Still a high number, let's not forget that. Including food and energy, PC inflation rose 0.3% for the month and 6.2% on a yearly basis. Personal spending rose 0.6% more than expected amid a rise in prices. Uh, compensation costs increased 1.2% in the third quarter in line with estimates. So here's the thing, it came in line with estimates. And in this market, that's all you need. That's all you need. You, 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 when you're talking about a market that's been devastated, when you're talking about a NASDAQ that at its lows was down like 38%, right? All you need is not a disaster, in line, and you can fly to the moon. Meta, Google, Amazon, all three of those stocks could have flew to the moon this week if they would have just came in with decent numbers. But they all came in with dumpster fires, so they all got hit harder. They all fell more. And so in this market, when you're this devastated, all you need is just... It's not the end of the world and you go to the moon, man. It's not that hard. It's not that hard when you're this devastated. And so you get in line and, and bull, 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 you know, bye, bye, bye. Look at how fast they switch up. Look at this, okay? So about a month ago, we were at about 61% of investors were bearish on the market for the next six months. Remember, this, this survey is supposed to be for the next six months. 
And that's one of the highest numbers you'll ever see in the history of the AII investor sentiment. And by the way, if you you can go to the AI I, I, uh, you know page and click right here, more historical sentiment, and you'll be able to pull up on your computer every single number that's ever come out since this started back in like the 80s. And you'll find this is actually one of the highest numbers in the history of that, one of the highest. And look at how much things have switched in a matter of a month, right? Now there's only, and this is still actually a high number, but it's nothing compared to this, 45.7% of investors are bearish on the market the next six months. And this gets into a, a very important conversation that I mentioned it was just about uh, maybe a week ago or so when I was explaining this, and I don't know how many of you guys caught this, right? But I was explaining that the sentiment is mainly sometimes driven by what the market conditions are. So if the market's going up, guess what? All investors start feeling bullish on the market for the next six months. And if the market keeps going down and down and down, all these investors start feeling bearish. And so as much as you might think it should be the market should be driven in terms of the sentiment by fundamentals, and that should dictate where stocks go. It's actually the, the vice versa situation. The stock price is going up or down is what's dictating the sentiment from individual investors out there, okay? And it's as simple as that. And uh, so, man, they're switching and they're switching fast. And the more this market moves up, guess what? The more you're going to see this number go down and the more you're going to see this number go up. I'm telling you, the market pricing dictates this whole show. It dictates the whole thing, okay? Now, I did a video 10 days ago called Stock Market Soars. There's a tsunami of buyers coming, right? And in that video, I'd go into the tsunami of buyers are coming, right? And the way I kind of would think about this is it's kind of like an avalanche, right? And you've had everybody want to kind of be out of the market, right? Everybody turned bearish. NASDAQ was down like 38% as a few, 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 uh, few weeks ago, right? Everybody turned bearish on this market, 60 plus percent of investors bearish. It's an incredibly high number, one of the highest we've ever seen. So everybody moves to the sideline, everybody sells their stocks, right? And then you kind of have it like, you know, prior to an avalanche, the snow's just chilling there, right? And then eventually something breaks and the snow starts falling, right? And next thing you know, as it goes down the hill, it picks up more and more steam. And so we're in that sort of market right now that, the more this baby goes, the more it's going to pick up steam and catch on more buyers. And that's where I get into the tsunami of buyers expression, right? Because essentially what's playing out here is we have so many folks that were bearish in this market, shorts, put options, right? That are now going to roll that money into buying stocks. And the more, the more the market goes up, the more they're going to have to do it. The more they're going to start underperforming the indexes, the more they're going to have to try to catch up before year end. And uh, then you start getting into a whole FOMO cycle. And I'm telling you, like, it's like an avalanche of buying. And it's already, it's already started. Like, it's clear in the, the numbers, right? It's already started. And then all of a sudden what we'll start building is even a FOMO cycle around fundamentals. Because once the market starts rolling more and more and more, you start getting technicals that start to get hit. That people say, okay, I have to go buy this stock because this certain technical uh, got hit, right? You have the algorithm start to buy in. And you've got this algorith algorithmic buying that just comes in, right? You have fund managers that are underperforming that have to start buying. So it just creates this enormous buying pressure. And then because the market starts going up, everybody starts looking and they're saying, you know what? Maybe the worst is behind us. Maybe that whole, you know, big recession talk they were talking about in 2023, maybe that's not going to happen. That's not the way they start looking at it. And they start looking at it from the perspective of maybe these companies' earnings have already gone down as much as they'll go down in 2022, right? And in 2023 will be a recovery year. And that's the way they'll start to look at this thing the more the market goes up. I'm telling you, the market pricing drives the whole sentiment in the market. And the more you get things going one way, it's like an avalanche of just then all of a sudden it's like, you know, excitement, FOMO, going into the new year. Oh boy, okay? And uh, it's the way it plays out. And it plays out like this basically every single time. And um, it's just funny how, how it plays out like that. You think, you know, it wouldn't be that way, but it is that way. It is that way, and it's always been that way. And uh, the more, you know, if you go back to why was everybody bullish on the market? Almost everybody was bullish on the market back in, you know, going into this year, right? Go back to the numbers in November and December of, of, 20, uh, of 2021, right? Go back to a year ago, today you know, at the end of October, 2021. And you'll find, you'll, you'll see most people are the most bullish on the market over the next six months that you could pr pretty much ever find. Go back to the beginning of January of this year. People were incredibly bullish on the market. And what did we get over the next six months? We got a market that crashed. 
We got an S&P that went down massively. We got a NASDAQ that went down 30 plus percent. We got countless stocks that fell 50, 60, 70, 80%. We got the furthest thing from a bullish market. We got a crash market. That's what we got. But yet everybody was so bullish going into it. Why were they so bullish? Because the price momentum going in was bullish. That's why, okay? And um, so it's funny. It's just funny how it all plays out. The fundamentals and technicals and all those sorts of things, they all matter. But at the end of the day, you know, what's really driving sentiment is how the, the market's doing in general, right? No. I wonder if you guys saw, Chevron destroyed their numbers. Exxon had amazing numbers as well, right? Chevron reported adjusted earnings of $10.8 billion or 556 a share, a 90% increase from a year ago, but below the second quarter's $11.1 billion operating income and $66 billion of revenue. Analysts adjusted earnings per share had expected 49. They did 556, massive beat there. They expected revenue of 57 billion and uh, the company did 66 billion? right? Uh, 66 operating revenue, 66 billion. They did a, a massive number. It was a huge beat, bottom line, okay? Um, so in, in this whole situation, when it came to Chevron, massive beats for this company. And people are looking at it and say, why is the stock price not going up in, in a ma major way, right? Because it, it's only up 1% today. And people think like, oh, my company beats huge, I'm, the stock price is going to fly. The stock went up 1%. They didn't even go up as much as the market today. The market was up way more than 1% today. So this underperformed the market after they killed earnings, right? Well, here's the problem. The stock's gone up 59% over the past year. So if, I mean, almost every stock's been devastated over the past year. And the fact that Chevron and any of these oil and gas stocks have performed great over the past year, they've priced in a lot of this good news already, okay? They've already priced this in. No different than when Shopify was, you know, up 300% from its price it's currently at, right? It priced in a lot of good news. This happens with stocks. And so when the good news comes, it's already been priced in at that point in time. The market's already played that game. And so you get these great earnings from Chevron and people are like, 1%? What? How? You know, that's the way it happens in the stock market, okay? It just is what it is. You can be frustrated about it or whatever. These things are priced in way before they happen almost every single time, right? And uh, also, here's the other problem with Chevron and for all the oil and gas stocks. Where's the price of oil going to be in a year? Tell me. No one really knows, right? Now, people might be bullish on it and that's fine or bearish or whatever, right? But no one really knows. And so at the end of the day, none of these oil and gas companies, they don't control their own fate. They don't. Most companies out there can control their own fate to a certain extent. Obviously, the economy is really important. But when it comes to oil and gas sector, it's so much a supply and demand game. What if uh, the Saudis want to drill more, or drill less or whatever, right? And there's some certain times that in the Middle East, they want to drill a lot to potentially eliminate competition. Um, sometimes they want to drill a little less because they look at it as time to, to you know, cash some very nice profits. And it depends. And it's a very confusing situation, obviously. Then you got Europe and, and everything that goes on over there. So that's just something important to remember. And that goes for all stocks. It's not like just Chevron, but this goes for all stocks in the market. It's just the way it is, man. These things are priced in. Like, this has been priced in. That's why the stock's up 59%, why the rest of the market tanked over the past year, okay? No. Huge week next week for earnings again. You know, in terms of if anybody out there is watching this that you own the mid caps, you own small caps, you know, the next two to three weeks are our big weeks, okay? Those are our big weeks for those sorts of stocks, right? We got the big massive techs that already reported, right? The Microsoft, Google, Meta, Amazon, Apple, those companies have already done it now at this point in time. So now you're going to get into some of the smaller of the big tech companies are going to be report reporting over the next one to two weeks. And like I said, a lot of the mid caps and small caps are going to be reporting over the next few weeks, which uh, for those, very important to watch margins for these companies. For any of the small caps, watch the margins. We should start to see hopefully some improvements in margins and we should hear these companies say that they're expecting margins to get in a much better place over the next few quarters. The reason being is commodities have come down in a massive way. Things like shipping costs have come down in a massive way. Uh, transportation in general has come down in a pretty significant way over the last six, nine, even 12 months, depending upon you know what you're talking about there. So that's going to be something that's going to be really big for those stocks. And once again, a lot of those stocks are priced for devastation. So if they can just come in with not disasters, you're going to see some epic moves. And I mean epic moves like moves like you can't even believe like the stock is really going up this much and uh, remember a lot of those stocks still have very heavy short amounts on them so you know for a lot of those companies they've just come in with disappointing quarter after disappointing quarter if they can just come in with some decents 
you know, you'll see, you'll see 20, 30, 40, even 50% moves in some of these stocks in a day, not in a week, in a day. So uh, obviously it's going to be a company by company basis, but uh, yeah, it's going to be huge over the next few weeks for earnings. And I'll keep you guys up to date on everything that's going on out there in general. Make sure you check out Moomoo Moo and get some free stocks from Moomoo. Moo, uh, why they still got those going on up to 15 free stocks valued up to $2,000. That will be pinned comment down there. Much love as always, folks. It's going to be a busy week next week. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll probably have a Sunday video for you guys and have a great day.